Maybe one day I'll get the rest of the AT sweat gear going. Well, I don't tend to have sweaty wrists. Greetings and salutations. I'm back down the shed again. Wanted to do some more work on the claws. Now, it's been a few days since I've worked on these, so I've got a, I've had time to think about where I want to go with these. And I've decided that what's probably going to be best, at least to start off with, is I'm going to try and cut out a channel on here. I'm probably just going to make it a square one. But I figured it just helps save a lot of time and, you know, just basically aggravation if I just put a channel in there and then when it goes down it won't just pinch in like that. That's the first thing. Well, that's the easiest thing. Now what I need to do with the claws is I need to start, I'm going to pinch these down, probably like get a clamp or something, and I'm going to start filing or sanding those little bits off, make it a bit more flush, also give it some teeth for the glue to grip onto a bit better. And then I have to start figuring out how I'm going to support this. So I'm thinking of maybe... That part's just gonna get glued straight down onto the flat of this, which is gonna be, give it a lot of strength. It's just where I'm gonna attach it on the top. I'm thinking of making like a plate around this. So when the flat piece goes on, it's gonna be nice and solid. Now, the thing I wanna show, is I always love showing new tips and tricks, is while I glue these together with super glue, the one thing I wanted to do but I didn't have it here at the time, is I wanted to use this. Now, now you may have seen in some of the builders' videos they'll use something called a kicker when they're using superglue. It basically kickstarts the drying process with the superglue a bit better. Um, glues like these, they tend to run a couple of seconds uh, gluing time. Uh, this one runs about five to 10, depending on temperature variance. Some more powerful glues will tend to dry a lot quicker, so you'll never need to use a kicker. But if you've got a glue like this, which is more of a gel, and I'm not sure if you can see that, this is um, Tarzan Grip Shockproof uh, Super Glue, Rubber Titans, but it's not as runny as some of your other glues, and this takes a fair bit to dry, so it may take about 10 to 30 seconds to cure or at least to cure but not hard enough so baking powder will accelerate the drying process now with the gel it still needs time to fully bond it'll bond the surface and then it'll take time to cure it does say it takes about 48 hours to fully cure up which i will agree it does take a while however what we're going to use it for is probably when i've got everything in here I'm going to just run some of that gel glue inside these channels and hit it with the baking powder and it effectively acts like a weld. It's just, it gives some extra structure to it. And that's the other good thing about using baking powder is that it effectively, you can use it to add volume. People who use resin kits or have made resin kits and there's bubbles in there which sometimes is just unavoidable, we'll use uh, super glue and baking powder as a method to fill in those gaps. Again, you still need to, you know, it still needs to work because it tends to leave like a dome effect on top. And again, you want to leave it to cure out fully, but it's a great way of um, ensuring you've got some substance in there because typically when it dries, it does tend to thin down no matter how much you try and build it up. So it just allows a bit more of a thickness. I could use say uh, hot glue or something like that, but in Australian heat, um, it's not wise to use hot glue in prop building. Uh, your body heat mixed with the foam basically will just weaken the shit out of hot glue. And I have a friend who built this big elaborate costume for Icon, I think it was Icon, and he was out there for a couple of hours, and then the body heat plus the Perth temperature at the time, it was like mid to late February, so it was just after the peak of summer, and even though he was in a air conditioning area, it was still hot enough that it just basically melted. 
all the glue melted and it was falling off. So super glue is good for binding. If you're gonna use hot glue, use it for reinforcing. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna use my glues for that. Now I'm still figuring out how to do the rest of the costume. I do have a material, I'll just grab it right now. Now I do have this, this is called core flute. It's basically like corrugated cardboard, but it's plastic. You may have seen these as like signs and stuff like that. Uh, this was an X sign. It's got a lot of these stickers and that on there. I don't particularly want spot. I can use that side. I'm, prob I'm just gonna prototype with this at the moment because I'm not entirely sure how well this is gonna work. Now I've seen some reports that say glues are completely ineffective. I've heard that super glue is effective, but primarily what people tend to use with this is heat forming. And I'm not sure how effective I can be at that for what I'm doing. As you can see, this was mechanically attached. Now I have contemplating using pop rivets, but I'm not sure the structural integrity is gonna be any good. I mean, it is plastic. There's a very good chance that a pop rivet will just pop out. I could probably use a pop rivet with a washer, but this is five mil thick. You can get 2.5 mil, but that is quite a bit of area to get a rivet through and a washer. So it might be one of those things I might need two washers. I might need something just so it gives give a surface area it won't just immediately pop once it's riveted and you know once it's popped you you can't stop like every material there's always a positive and a negative this is positive is because it's pretty cheap it's relatively easy to work with it's very light but i don't know about structural integrity i could just as well use pvc foam board but whereas like the equivalent size of a PC foam board to this, this is about five bucks. PC foam board is 20 to 30 to 50. So yeah, I don't have that. I'm not that rich. I'm not making any money off YouTube, I'll tell you that. So we'll see how we go.
So it's taken me a couple of hours to get this far. Um, not 100% happy, I'll be honest. And so if I'm going to be using this, it's probably one of those things where I'm going to be very careful. But I'm tempted to get a heat gun and try and bend this around, but. Uh, I can probably you know, shape these corners, bog fill it and all sorts, but <sighs> I'll be honest, I'm not 100% on this. 
but it'll probably be fine. I don't know if I want to plug these little holes in here. No, they're probably fine. No one's probably going to notice that. They're going to be entirely up. I'm going to pretty much hold these like that. I'm, defined, I'm just trying to decide if I want to keep it static sideways or I want to be able to turn them. I'm determined just to keep them static. That means I just need to cut out a hole. I'll probably pull this apart and refeed it back into the the wrist part and go from there and just keep it as a static piece. So yeah, I'm gonna have a break and think about how I wanna continue on with this. Um, Cause I've got the other one ready for the, for the plate and oh, I'm just not a hundred percent on board with how this is turning out. As I said in the other video, failure is always an option. I'll have to have a think about this one. <sighs> in the meantime, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that business. Any comments, post them down below, hit the bell, all that bull. See ya.